Hey guys, welcome to our digital anchor chart for standard NBT2, which says that you can explain patterns in the number of zeros of the product when multiplying a number by powers of 10 and explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point when a decimal is multiplied or divided by a power of 10. Use whole number exponents to denote powers of 10. So lots of words there. Um, our learning target is basically that you can explain patterns when multiplying or dividing by a power of 10. Well, first thing that we need to address is what is a power of 10? Um, right here, I have written um, tens with exponents. An exponent basically tells you how many times you're going to multiply this number times itself. So I'm going to skip 10 to the zero, come back to that one in a minute. Um, 10 to the first power is simply 10 one time. 10 one time. So 10 to the first power means 10. And in standard form, that answer is still going to be 10. All right, so let me add some lines here. So we don't lose track of where we are. Okay, so 10 to the first power is simply 10 one time. 10 to the second power is going to be 10 times 10. So like uh, multiplication is repeated addition, exponents are repeated multiplication. So this tells us how many times we're going to multiply the base, which is in this case a 10, by itself. We're going to multiply the base of 10 times itself two times. So 10 times 10. All right. Uh, so 10 to the third power is going to be 10 times 10 times 10. Okay. 10 to the fourth power, 10 times itself four times. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Okay. And finally, 10 to the fifth power. 10 times itself five times. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Not to be confused with 10 times 5. These are very different. 10 times 5 is going to be 50. 10 times itself five times is going to give us a very large number. So let's go down our chart and fill these in in standard form. Standard form is the regular form of a number, what you're used to seeing. So 10 to the second power is written as an expression, 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, okay? 10 times itself three times, 10 times 10 is 100, multiply 100 times 10 and you get 1,000. Okay, notice the pattern. Okay, the standard is all about patterns. So we're noticing that each time I multiply by 10 an additional time, what's happening over here to my zeros? I hope that you're noticing that you're getting an additional zero because we're shifting in the place value chart, just like we learned in our place value standard. Every time you multiply by a power of 10, you are shifting this number one additional place. So here we have, and actually if I answer 10 to the zero power, that's going to be 10 no times. That answer to 10 to the zero power is one. Okay, because the one is in the ones place there. 10 to the first power, that one shifts and that becomes 10. Shifts one time. 10 to the second power, it shifts two times and it becomes 100. 10 to the third power, shifts three times, one, two, three, and it becomes a thousand. Then to the fourth power, we have four shifts and it becomes 10,000. And 10 to the fifth is going to be a one with five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then I put my comma. So each time you multiply by a power of 10, you are essentially shifting on your place value chart. One place. Okay. So this standard specifically asks us to notice the pattern in the number of zeros in the product when multiplying by a power of 10. I want you to take special notice of the fact that 10 to the first power has one zero. 10 to the second power has 
two zeros. 10 to the third power has three zeros. 10 to the fourth power has four zeros. And 10 to the fifth power has five zeros. So if I told you to do 10 to the 12th power, you should be able to tell me, Miss Southern, that's gonna be a one with 12 zeros. I don't know what that number is, but I know that that's gonna have 12 zeros because the exponent is 12. If I tell you 10 to the third power, I know that's gonna have three zeros because it has an exponent of three. Okay, so that's the first part that we need to understand. What is a power of 10? What does it mean as an expression? What does it look like in standard form? So powers of 10 are used basically as a shorthand. Instead of having to write 100,000, I can just write 10 to the fifth power. So your job is basically to understand when you see 10 to the fifth power, that simply means 100,000. So you need to learn what those mean. And then we need to be able to apply them to multiply and divide. So if I have 10, five, to, uh, five multiplied times 10 to the second power, when I see that 10 to the second power, I can do one of two things. I can understand that this 10 to the second power really means 100. And so I'm just doing five times 100, which is 500. Or I can think about the fact that I am shifting the place value of the five two times. And because I am multiplying, that number is getting larger. I did post a cute little video um, called Mr. Dull, and that's kind of one way to remember that. When you multiply, the number shifts, or this, the decimal, hold that thought. Um, so yeah, I always think about, I'm not real good with right and left, Miss Southern told you that already, but I always think about if I'm multiplying, my number's getting larger, and if I'm dividing, my number should get smaller. So if I'm at five and I'm multiplying it times 100, I know that that, I'm going to shift that five two places to make it larger, okay? Now, the same concept works for division, but it's a little bit different because instead of looking at the zeros in the number, we're gonna look at the decimal place in the number. So you're gonna say to me, Miss Southern, that's a 378, it doesn't have a decimal. And I'm gonna say to you, all numbers have a decimal. It's just at the end. Where's the decimal? It's at the end. It's at the end of a whole number, just like a period. So think of a period comes at the end of a sentence, a decimal comes at the end of a whole number. So if you have a whole number and you don't know where the decimal is, it's at the end, like a period. So we're gonna place the decimal behind the eight, and then I'm dividing this by 10 to the third power. That means I need to shift that decimal three places. One, two, three, okay? And I, my new number is zero decimal three, seven, eight. This decimal is read 378 thousandths. Now, there's not gonna be a lot of work with decimals here in unit one, but in unit two and three, it's coming. So we might as well just learn the rule. If you have to divide by a power of 10, you are essentially shifting your decimal. Okay, you can think of that shifting the decimal in any number. You can think about it when you're multiplying with that five, that the decimal is here, and you are at the end of the five, like a period, and you are gonna shift that decimal place two times. One, two. Now, when you multiply a number, multiply, the decimal shifts right, and it makes the number larger. That's what I think of, okay? And when you divide, the decimal shifts left. And we remember that by a dude named Mr. Dull. There's a cute little video you can watch. I posted it on your slide, so you'll find it there. Uh, Mr. Dole, Mr. Dole.
Okay, multiply right, divide left. So that's just a cute little trick for you to remember that. I always think about, is it getting larger or smaller? That's just how my brain works. I know that if I'm taking 378 and I'm dividing it by 1,000, that number is going to become very small, okay? So it's 378 thousandths, okay? Um, let's do another one. This last one says 25 times 10 to the fourth power. So where's my period or where's my decimal? It's at the end like a period right here, okay? I want this number to get larger, so I'm going to go right, multiply right, and I want to shift that decimal four times. So I can put the 25, and then I can put move that decimal four places. One, two, three, four. And then I can just go back in each of those humps and put a zero. So that my final answer is 250,000, which makes sense because 25 times 10,000 would give me 250,000. All right. I know it's a lot. We're going to practice it in class. No worries. You have this video to reference back if you need it. Bye, guys.